Sir, I move uh, the motion standing in my name that this House recognises the Multicultural Communities Council of South Australia has been supporting migrant communities and people from culturally and linguistically diverse backgrounds since it was established in 1995, but that its roots stretch back to the 1970s and, of course, uh, even before. Uh, that we acknowledge the Multicultural Communities Council now represents 120 multicultural organisations and delivers a wide range of programs to increase the capacity of its member organisations and that it advocates for the needs and aspirations of culturally and linguistically diverse organisations, communities and individuals. Uh, we also note that the Multicultural Communities Council is a multicultural coordinating partner for the Department uh, of Human Services Community Connections Program and that it supports people from new and emerging communities to increase their independence and build stronger social and community connections and also uh, that we note the significant positive impact the Multicultural Communities Council SA has made towards building social cohesion and enhancing multiculturalism and interculturalism in South Australia. It's been a journey and I want to recognise the individuals who do so much to support at board and executive level of the Council, beginning with their patron, the Honourable Hugh Van Lay AC, former Governor of South Australia, uh, a man who, along with his wife Lan, their story has been known by generations of South Australians, uh, somebody who could come here with nothing but a suitcase full of dreams from Vietnam on a boat, be welcomed in Darwin Harbour uh, with a g'day mate uh, and then become South Australia's Governor, Her Majesty's representative uh, in South Australia. Uh, continuing the, to give back to the country as he does every day, one of the roles that he does is as patron uh, of the Multicultural Communities Council. I recognise the Chair, Miriam Cocking, uh, Deputy Chair, Dr Ian Harmsdorf, OIM, uh, Treasurer, uh, Silvio Yarrola, one of the uh, first members of the community in the Italian community uh, to uh, welcome me as a candidate for Morial to 2008, as he welcomes everybody. I have no idea whether Silvio voted for me, but as he does with all political candidates, uh, he is a very welcoming person. I thank Silvio for that on the record. I don't mean to uh, undermine the significant efforts of Miriam and Ian by singling out Silvio, but there was a certain kindness that he did me, for which I'm very grateful. Uh, also on the board, Eduardo Donoso, uh, Leonard Scancalepore, uh, Malgorz Zata uh, Skalban, OAM, uh, Manju uh, Kadka, uh, Nasir Hussain, Patricia Kadis, uh, and Raj Pandey. Uh, Raj is also a member of the um, uh, South Australian Multicultural uh, 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 Commission. Uh, and Suren Edgar. Uh, now, the team at Multicultural Communities Council is led by one of my constituents, uh, Helena Kiriazopoulos, OAM. It was wonderful to see her honoured for her significant work over a number of years uh, advancing multiculturalism in South Australia in the uh, Australian honours lists in the last couple of years. Uh, and also recognise their other staff, Julie Hoare, Kristen Johansson, uh, Vicky Rachi, Annie Barone, uh, Florine Fernandez, Geoffrey Brown, George Guzonis, Hannah Grave, Catherine Greer, Lena Gasparian, uh, Ling Jian, Louis Cohen, Magi Assad, uh, Milan Andelkovic, uh, Omar Ahmed, uh, Perrin Abbas, uh, Savri Uk, uh, JP, Sharon Mooney, Cesario uh, Filavong, uh, Somi Linze, Stefano Pratola, Ukash Ali Ahmed, Veronica Davila, Victoria Tyrely, and uh, Zhao Hui Lu. Uh, better known as Abby to many, but I recognise all of their significant work. Um, this is a group of people who support communities in South Australia, a uh, particularly valuable resource uh, for communities with elements of vulnerability, whether that is new arrivals uh, or communities indeed supporting uh, more elderly South Australians or other South Australians that need that extra level of support. The services that they run are significant. Um, more than a dozen different programs for a wide range of communities, filling niches where government services can, uh, government might act, but indeed it is uh, the Multicultural Community Council has filled uh, those niches. Uh, that NGO service being able to more readily and more quickly adapt to meet those needs and supporting uh, more than 100 community organisations around South Australia. Uh, the needs of uh, newer migrant communities often differ uh, from more established communities. And the Multicultural Community Council looks to be agile in identifying those needs, advocating to government, but also uh, suggesting, and in those cases, certain cases, 
providing and supporting uh, with those needs. Um, so I want to commend the Council for its work. Its foundations, as the motion said, started before uh, the, uh, the initial uh, uh, introduction in 1995. Its roots stretch back to the 1970s, a time when particularly the nature of migration to South Australia uh, and Australia uh, was changing dramatically. And I think I just want to conclude with a couple of minutes reflecting on the way our multicultural society uh, and immigration policy in Australia has changed since Federation. Because it is, of course, uh, to our shame as a nation, although uh, we were not necessarily the only uh, country that did not have uh, modern values such as we would identify as appropriate uh, now. We're not the only country to be doing this in 1901. But when we federated, uh, the White Australia policy uh, was our formal immigration position. Uh, this is based on policies that were in provinces, our states, uh, prior to this as a result of uh, Victorian miners being uh, very, very uh, uh, discriminatory towards Chinese miners in the 1850s. Uh, Queensland uh, policy settings in relating to Pacific Island labourers uh, in North Queensland. So when we came together as a country in 1901, uh, along with uh, discrimination against Aboriginal South Australians, there was also discrimination in our immigration policy uh, against non-European settlers. And so in 1901, the Immigration Restriction Act uh, included, for example, the dictation test, uh, which was in operation for more than five decades and is understood to be something of a stain on on our character as a nation, certainly in the way that it was implemented uh, to discriminate against non-European migrants. Uh, it's sad to say that it was reinforced during the Second World War uh, by Prime Minister Curtin, who in many other ways was, of course, a very fine leader, uh, but on this it was very wrong. Uh, I put this history because I think our next Prime Minister, Prime Minister Menzies, was erroneously described and assumed, I think, by many to have instituted the White Australia policy. But indeed, while he did, of course, have values that were of his time in many ways, it was under the Menzies government that the White Australia policy started to be dismantled. Indeed, as early as 1949, Immigration Minister Harold Holt, uh, who plays uh, a starring role uh, in this chronology a little bit later, but as Immigration Minister in 1949, Harold Holt took the first steps towards the dismantling of the policy, towards the modern immigration program that we have now, uh, when he took 800 non-European refugees after the Second World War and also made it clear that Japanese war brides, as they were then known, uh, were able to become part of Australia. In 1957, uh, the uh, uh, first, uh, sorry, the, the rules were changed again uh, for non-Europeans with 15 years residence to be given citizenship. Now, uh, that's a step, but we were still a long way from parity, given that five years uh, was the time that European residents had to wait. But fortunately, in 1958, further steps were taken under Immigration Minister then Sir Alexander Downer, uh, a predecessor of the Alexander Downer that served more recently as Foreign Minister. Uh, in that year, 1958, the Act was changed. References to race were removed, and the dictation test was finally abolished. Uh, more work needed to be done, and indeed it was later, uh, closer to the Harold Holt government, when the update of the non-European policy uh, was undertaken, so it was to be based on the suitability of settlers, uh, and then formal, formal abolition of the White Australia policy took place under the Holt government. Temporary residents uh, were offered citizenship after five years, uh, European or non-European alike. Uh, Gough Whitlam took more, some further important steps in 1973 as Prime Minister. Uh, time for residency was reduced from five years to three years. Uh, there was, a, rather than there just being uh, no formal discrimination against non-European settlers, uh, as was the uh, abolition of the White Australia policy, William took that one step further uh, and had the policy that there was proactive uh, non-discrimination requirement in the policy, uh, and indeed we ratified at that time some of our international treaties. However, in practice, uh, unfortunately, the impact, and this was felt certainly by uh, Vietnamese migrants and refugees to Australia, the overall immigration 
intake was lowered significantly. So the, in practice, the numbers were going down despite those steps forward. Uh, but that was addressed further under Malcolm Fraser uh, between 1975 and 1978. We saw uh, a significant rewrite of our immigration policy, which has formed the basis of subsequent labour and liberal immigration policies over the decades since. Now, through this time, there was a change in the way that Australia presented itself as a country, uh, and it was the work that wasn't just undertaken by prime ministers or immigration ministers who changed the law, and, you know, we can pat ourselves on the back all we like for changing the law to what it should have been in the first place, but I would like to pay tribute to those uh, people who came to Australia uh, with a suitcase full of dreams or maybe a suitcase full of clothes uh, or whatever it might have been. People came to Australia in a range of different circumstances, but they, uh, whether they were fleeing uh, uh, war zones or whether they were seeking economic advancement, whether they were looking for a job opportunity, uh, whether they were indeed just looking to reconnect with family. There are hundreds of different reasons that people have been coming to Australia in waves of migration. What they have in common uh, is a desire to build a better lives for themselves and their families. Uh, what they have in common is that they have individually, uh, as communities, and collectively uh, enhanced Australia, uh, enhanced our country, enhanced Australia, made our country better, made our country stronger, made our country and our state and our communities better to live in. I'm so pleased that my family will grow up in the multicultural Australia that we now cherish uh, and must take every opportunity to seek to protect. I am so encouraged that this is a policy that has shared bipartisan support now for decades and indeed in South Australia our government, successive government, each government builds on the legacy of the last uh, in supporting uh, multicultural communities more effectively and I look forward to the contribution that these communities will continue to make particularly supported uh, by the Multicultural Community Council of South Australia who we are acknowledging in this motion. I commend the motion to the House.